Hi everybody, welcome back. We're just going to finish our uh, lecture video series on major expenditures. Uh, today we're talking about food. All right, now that's a 13% uh, uh, typically of a average person's income, but that could vary uh, depending on the individual and also depending on how often they eat away from home. All right. Uh, and you typically we'll see something about you know this split where it's like 7.7 .7 to 8 percent home cooking and the other five percent or so is eating out all right and uh, you know you got to consider obviously uh, it's really tempting to eat out all the time because that's where all the tasty uh, stuff is but typically the food that you're getting is not always uh, as healthy for you and it's also not always as healthy for your budget all right so now we've got uh, a few primary sources of food. You've got your uh, prepare food at home and your food away from home. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm sh I'm pretty sure uh, the thing that you have for your what primary sources of food it has like five options. Uh, there should have only been two. So if you see five options there, just put for the first two. All right, and uh, the ones that you get from home, um, this is you know stuff you make from scratch, stuff you can pick up at a convenience store that you can eat right away. There are the ready-to-eat meals that you can find in the freezer section of your food store, and then obviously there's you know fast food restaurants and uh, and the like. Those are where you can typically get your food. All right. Now, uh, we will be talking a lot about how eating at home is going to end up being a lot better for your spending plan. I'm not trying to tell you never dine out. I'm not trying to tell you never have a, a little something from an institution outside of your home, right? Like a $4 latte every once in a while is a thing that makes life more enjoyable. You like your coffee. You like that st the type of coffee that you could specifically get made for you by a barista, all right? Uh, but the difference and the, the key to that wording is once in a while, all right? If you have a daily $4 latte, that adds up pretty significantly and can make a, uh, a pretty taxing uh, burden on your monthly budget, all right? You know, if, we, if you actually do a daily thing, let's, you know, that could be about $100 that you're just taking right out of your, uh, your monthly budget. So do, do, do keep note of that. All right, so uh, let's let's go through an example here. Let's say we have burger night for a family of four. All right, if you wanted to get food from a uh, you know from away from home, you could get the McDonald's quarter pounder cheeseburger combo meal nonsense, or you can pair the food at home. Uh, get you know burgers of the buns. You have all the condiments that you have in your fridge. You can have a five pound bag of potato, cut them up nice, make make some fries at home, which will probably end up being healthier than the ones at McDonald's. And you know, you can get a 12 pack of Coke or you know, Diet Coke or whatever your beverage of choice if you're not a soda home, juice or water. All right, if you did this at uh, McDonald's or Burger King, whatever the cost per person would be about $6.30, you know, which adds up to 25 and change. All right, if you uh, went to the food store, uh, depending on where you're buying, uh, okay, th that'll typically be like five and uh, five and change, uh, maybe a little under six. And, you know, th the cost might seem minimal there, but it adds up over time. All right, and the result of this is that the meal you prepare at home is going to be less expensive and you typically are going to have leftovers because you can make more. All right, all right. You're not you're not getting as much with that uh, meal that you order out. Obviously, it saves time and it's greasier, so it'll taste delicious. But you know, sometimes we have to make sacrifices here. Now we gotta also make sure that while we're watching our financial well-being, we're also just watching our own well-being. All right, we want to make sure that we're having well-balanced meals uh, for high nutrition. All right, and that means that. We want to have our fruits, our grains, our vegetables, our proteins, and our dairy. All right. Now the uh, 
the old food pyramid that I grew up in is defunct because that used to include a little bit at the top that said like sugars and all that fun stuff, uh, which gave an unhealthy uh, message across that it's like, look, sugars are most important. They're up there at the top or, you know, you must have sugars in your diet. Eh, nonsense. And then they try to make it not tiered and make it all sideways, but then it looked weird. I like this new plate. This is nice. Um, but yeah, you know, you want to get so your fruits, all right? I myself have a banana every day. Uh, you guys might have seen it on my desk when we were still able to see it in person. I actually have one in front of me right now uh, that I will have later on. <laughs> uh, but, you know, any types of uh, fruit is good. You typically want to vary the types of fruits. So you get the different vitamins, uh, from the fruits like the banana for the potassium or you know citrus fruits for that vitamin c uh good stuff vegetables you want to get that vitamin k out of your vegetables and also fiber things like that um iron if you're a big broccoli fan ooh, you got to get that iron especially if you're feeling anemic um, grains are a great source of you know carbohydrates which are you know that most basic bit of energy that we are going to work off of um you, obviously you don't want to go heavy on the carbohydrates but it's good you know you can actually balance that into a really uh, healthy part of your diet and then that protein those amino acids that's gonna help us build and restore muscle especially if you're working out I'm, you know looking at you jamal <laughs> uh you know that's that's going to be a really healthy uh, part of your diet and then Dairy uh, will also be a good source of protein and a bunch of other essential vitamins. But, um, you know, if you're obviously not into that, that's also fine. And there you go. All right. There are other uh, considerations we need to make when we are deciding uh, what it is that we eat and what we are buying, uh, whether it's outside or inside the home. And that's uh, our time, our skills with cooking, our facilities and equipment and our dietary needs and our preferences, all right? Now, as, as far as time is concerned, you need to know how much time you have for preparation. If you're working a nine to five job, and then let's say you have a family that you need to take care of, uh, or you know maybe you're working two jobs, maybe your commute is really long, you might not have the time to prepare meals uh, for the week. And so you might either need to uh, Buy and prepare in bulk over the weekend. A lot of a lot of people do that. They make uh, meals over the weekend. They uh, they pack them up nicely, put them in the fridge or the freezer so that they uh, maintain, and then they take them out throughout the week. Um, and then obviously, you know, if it's uh, still a bit difficult to do that, you know, have a have a meal out. Treat yourself. Why not? Make sure you you know you're sticking to uh, a a plan that works well for your nutrition and for your budget, but you know, go nuts, you know, have a, have a good time. Uh, your skills, do you have the skills to prepare the meals uh, that you want to eat? Uh, and if not, are you interested in learning from others? Now you guys live in the generation of uh, prominent YouTube cooking channels. Bon Appetit, Binging with Babish, you guys can have a great time just looking that up and trying the fun things that they uh, have. And uh, you'll find as you build your repertoire that you'll be able to actually just figure your own things out, start cooking your own things. I'm actually uh, taking this time to look into uh, cooking myself. Not, not, not cooking myself, I'm not hopping into a pot of boiling water. You get the gist. <laughs> uh, facilities and equipment. Do you have the necessary appliances to cook what you want to cook? All right. Some people like making really uh, fancy things that require uh, special equipment or just really sharp knives, uh, processors, food processors, food mixers. You know, that's that's the type of thing that you need to consider, you know, if, if you even have the ability to make these things easily. And if you don't have the equipment, do you have uh, other things that can substitute for that equipment? Like maybe you don't have a stand mixer, but Maybe you can mix it by hand. Who knows? It might be a, a lot of work, but maybe you're looking for a nice arm workout. <laughs> uh, dietary needs. All right, this is a big one. Uh, a lot, a lot of people have uh, different dietary constraints based off of uh, their health, based off of their uh, their faith. Um, 
based off of the health or faith of those around them, uh, whether there are allergies existing in the home uh, or whether it's just, you know, something you want to keep peace on. Uh, based on beliefs, you know, if you are uh, staunchly vegan or vegetarian and you, uh, you can't have, uh, you know, protein from animal uh, food sources, you need to be able to find you know, the right protein sources for you, whether it's uh, soy or other beans. Um, there are also um, some other new options like the uh, Impossible Burger series uh, where they give you impossible meats, which I think are like starch and protein, uh, sorry, starch and potato e based. I'm not exactly sure of it, but I think that's the last thing I looked up. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's something to take into account. And then preferences is there because obviously it could be the healthiest food in the world. You know, you bro broccoli is an incredible vegetable, but if you hate broccoli, if it reviles you, uh, you know, the, you have to find, you can find other healthy alternatives to that particular vegetable. And, you know, you make sure that you, you eat a balanced diet that still makes you happy to eat. Because we're we're also just looking to live good uh, good lives. So if you're eating uh, all of your meals and they all make you feel like you are eating garbage, eh, you know, make make some compromises so that you can enjoy what it is that you're doing, so that you are more likely to continue doing that uh, happily. All right. So this ends um, our major expenditure video series. I'm going to be posting throughout the week different activities and uh, little quizzes for you guys to make sure that you're keeping up with all of this. And uh, yeah, here's a brief little summary of what we've gone over. Uh, housing, transportation, and food is about 60% of your spending. When you're trying to uh, figure out your housing, you got to determine uh, if renting or owning a home is best for you. And we went over the different options for both and the different considerations for both. Uh, when you're looking for transportation, consider the cost of owning a vehicle, and if that's way too high, consider your options for public transportation. It's a great way to get around, especially in bustling New York. And uh, eat well-balanced meals, uh, high in nutrition, that fit your spending plan uh, and fit your lifestyle. All right, guys, it's been a... Uh, been a good set of uh, videos and i hope you got a bunch out of this and i will see you tomorrow don't forget to do the attendance <laughs> i almost forgot to say that do the attendance form all right guys bye